Hey there. So we are doing something a little bit different today. I get asked a lot how I make tones on the Helix for bass. And since I have this new Music Man Stingray bass anyway that I need some tones for, I figured I'd walk you guys through the process. So normally I do this all on the Helix. I like the feel of the knobs and kind of the tactile touch of everything, but I'm gonna do this in the box here in, in HX Edit. That way you guys can see the process as we go. So uh, first I've got a new preset here in my bass folder. I have you know some jazz bass tones, a classic P bass tone on the flip top. And now we're gonna make a Music Man one. So the first thing I always do is make sure my routing is right. I want this to be going to path 2A so everything flows through the signal chain. Then the next thing is to grab a volume uh, block right here, right up front. I use this as a mute switch. It's just really easy to look down at the floor and see is my volume rocker back or forward and know that whatever I do here is not gonna be coming through the PA if it's there, if I need to warm up something, if I feel something's out of tune, I can test it before you know sending. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is, is grab an impulse response. And, and here's where it's really important to kinda know what you want before you start building the tone, right? Like out of this space, it's a Music Man Stingray. So I know it's got a lot of throaty mid-range. I know it's got a lot, ton of sub-bass frequencies in there and a good amount of like that piano, like bell, like treble. And I wanna keep all that. I wanna keep those characteristics of the bass, but I wanna tame some of the mid range uh, and go for a good tone that is gonna be kind of like a gospel rock tone. So something on the aggressive side, um, but not distorted or overpoweringly aggressive. So first things first, we'll grab an impulse response. I have some Ampeg impulse responses on here. It's a refrigerator cab, you know, it's the 810 or the 410. So I think there's a 410 in here that's gonna work really well. Uh, not the cut, I don't want the ribbon. So I think the fat mix, do we have? Yeah, fat mix. That really tamed the mid range already, right? Like you can hear just immediately. Versus. That speaker emulation really helps things for it to sound like a bass instead of sounding like just that DI full frequency tone. So, do we have one that's not EQ'd? I think I do. Yeah, fat mix there. Yeah, that, that keeps some more. Yeah, that EQ you can hear. This keeps some more of the mid range and a little more on that. Uh, a little more on the high range, and I like that. Um, the audio engineer can always EQ it out after the fact. I think that'll help me cut through in the ears mix, which no one is touching. So, first, let's save our progress. Save constantly whenever you're doing this, like compulsively. I, I've made so many tones where I get to the end and go, oh yeah, that's exactly what I want, and then I accidentally click the preset to try to rename it, and it just goes away. Um, so that's first. Second is the amp itself. So let's grab amp and we want a bass amp. Um, my default setting that I always throw in here first is the Aguilar. That's, that's what I'm really used to. I've played Aguilar amps for a good long time now. Um, and it's always a really good starting point. I think in this case though, it might not be quite bright enough for what I'm looking for. And I know if, you know, with this particular amp to, to get what I'm looking for, I'm gonna have to drive it harder than I'd want to. So let's look in like the Ampeg, um, Ampeg territory. I think the SVT Pro is gonna be a good, good contender here. 
Yeah, you can hear how the the high mids are are popping on that one. Really good. Maybe if I boost the treble a little bit uh, before before I start boosting and, and cutting things, I'm gonna I'm gonna try the rest of them. I I think let's try the SVT as well and see if this is yeah see this is what i'm talking about it's really bright it's got a ton of tone and just character for days but it's distorting you can hear when i dig in that high end just pops out a little bit with some crunch and that's what i i don't want for this tone. I might put something on here later that'll help me get that sound if I want it, but I think the bright's gonna be. Yeah, you can hear that fuzz. You can hear the, the hair on the high end of that. And it's a great sound for rock. Like if I were doing. Right, like if I were going for that, yes, absolutely. Uh, but in this case, yeah, I think something like the SVT Pro, Pro is better. Let's try the, uh, the Woody Blue. This is an acoustic amp that has been modeled. Ooh, I do like that thump right off the bat. I think that's probably too aggressive and too loud. First, let me turn the channel volume down to get it reined in a bit. That's still a little loud. Let's go even harder on that. Yeah, that's that's got vibe. That bass is too loud, though. This, this bass is putting so much uh sub low end information in there that this needs to come down and the treble does as well i don't want it to be quite that hyped yeah that that's really what i'm talking about here okay so that's a really good starting point i'm going to deactivate that for a second and actually put another amp block in here um And it's going to be the SVT4 Pro. And I just want to compare and contrast. And the SVT, let's see, I'd, I'd want to add a little more treble, like hype that up a little bit in some bass frequencies. Let's see if this gets us. And the ultra low. Yeah, I think that's getting, that's, that's also a really good sound for kind of what I'm looking for. All right, here, let's bypass that and go back to the acoustic. Yeah, there's just something about the treble adjustment here. Like if I ratchet this up, you'll hear it. It's those really, really high frequencies that are just coming out a little bit that is excellent on this amp and I think works really well with this bass in particular. I mean... Yeah, in the high range, it's it's bright without being harsh. I like that a lot. What happens if I mess with the bright switch on this? Too much, too much. I'm not trying to play metal. That being said, if I were trying to play metal, that boost, it sounds like it's at like 8K. It's a really, really high boost would be perfect. Yeah, that's... That's what I want completely and totally. So that is saved. Let's go ahead and get rid of this secondary amp here. And the last thing we'll do is just kind of a... Before 
before and after. I mean, besides it just being louder. I think it just has this roar and this rumble that I really like. All right, um, last test. Let's see how it does if I try to kind of P-base it. Yeah. It's still kind of uh, still kind of bright. Yeah, it's kind of bright for that. Like it's more like a rock P bass kind of tone than than uh, like a. The flip top depth that you would get but i think that that's a really good starting point point. and a lot of the time this is all i'll do for a tone i just set up an amp i don't change much um but there's a couple other things that i always put into these patches but first things first let's rename this because uh, it's an acoustic 360 and i want that to be dash mm because this is the acoustic. Let me spell acoustic, right? Acoustic. Acoustic 360 mm for Music Man. And the last couple things I'm gonna wanna put in here and assign to foot switches are, let's see here. It's under distortion, I think. There's a dark glass distortion that is really really good yeah the obsidian 7000 right so so let's dial that in a little bit i actually want no bass boost because i know that this is getting a ton of bass already and my high mids it's cutting high mids right now i actually want those boosted at like 1.5K and treble boosted. Yeah, so it's it's kind of grunty and, and nasty and, and I like that. I like that a lot. I'm gonna add a little more drive. Perfect. Yes. And then the grunt. Yeah. So. That's way more aggressive than what I'd want here, but sometimes, you know, if the band is kicking up, I'll need to kick in a rock tone really quick, and that's a, a great way to do it. Um, save that, and then the very last thing that I'm gonna add in here is on the bottom, I want to add a, uh, where's the new one? Dynamic Hall. This is a... Uh, <laughs> It's lush. Listen to how like gorgeous that is. I don't want quite four seconds. So let's do like three seconds. That pre-delay, let's shorten it to like 25. Room size, 20 meters. Yeah, that's good. Uh, damping, I actually want to bring that up to like 5K. Um, mix down a little bit to like 30 because I want it to be a little more subtle. I just want some... <laughs> right just just that that tail on there i think is great um low cut bring up the low cut like a lot a lot a lot a lot and the high cut move that up a bit as well And you know what? Let's let's go ahead and, and mix in a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so it's just this really beautiful, beautiful sound there. And then before that, I'm going to put a delay. Um, so let's go with Adriatic. Yeah, so that's, that's a little much right now. Um, Get on this. How do I? Uh, there we go. Yeah. So feedback. I want it to be much less than fifty percent. Mix relatively low. Yeah, that's sounding cool. Short, short delay. Yeah, so it like it lingers, it lingers, and that's really all it's doing. And that's only if we have something where it's like a quiet part, or or we need you know like a sustained piece of of uh, like the lick. right to just go up to a minor chord sometimes you just want that and sustain it out and that'll be good so i know this has been a lot longer than what i normally do but this is pretty much you know a finished tone um and and this is what what i do i'd probably assign delay reverb and drive to three separate pedals here uh but this is at the end of the day the tone that I'm going to use uh, with this bass, at least starting off. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful and answered some questions. If you want to know anything else about the process, drop a comment. I'm more than happy to answer, and I'll be doing a full review of this bass once I've had some time to gig on it uh, in the next couple weeks. So till then, take care. <laughs>